Let's have a closer look at the new Formula E Generation 3. Formula E is an only electric single-seater Formula series that had a great start and many manufacturers signed up for it. But in recent years the development opportunities and hence the possibility for manufacturers to show their competency in electric mobility pretty much stopped. While the cars look interesting, aerodynamics, chassis and battery cannot be improved by the teams and so some manufacturers left the series again. The new generation 3 should now add some excitement to Formula E and bring the car's performance to another level. Instead of being limited to 250 kW in the rear engine, teams can now use up to 350 kW. The top speed is now 322 km per hour instead of 280 with the previous generation. So let's see how the drag of the car changed. The formula for this is power equals to air density divided by 2 times the drag coefficient and frontal area times velocity to the power of 3. Now let's change this formula so we can calculate the product of ZD and A. And we get 0.89 for generation 2 and 0.82 for generation 3. If we assume that the frontal area is around 1.5 square meter for generation 2, that means the drag coefficient would be a little below 0.6, which is a reasonable number for a formula car with low downforce. CD times A of generation 3 is now very similar but slightly lower, which makes sense because the car is now 40mm narrower, 100mm lower and by the way almost 200mm shorter. So the frontal area is smaller. At the same time there is a very low rear wing now which reduces drag, but the front wheels are not covered anymore which increases drag again. So in summary we can say that frontal area is smaller and drag coefficient is about the same as before. There was a statement of the test driver that he thinks that the car has more downforce now. If we look at the car and at the numbers, we cannot really see where this additional downforce should come from. If the drag stays about the same and downforce should be increased, it means that the aerodynamic efficiency should be higher now, which is hard to believe given that the front wheels are not covered anymore. The only possibility would be that the floor produces more downforce now at a low drag penalty. But if we look at the car, we can see that aerodynamics wasn't the main focus here. We have a front wing that goes back to a similar design to generation 1 with a flat upper wing element for design only. There are small flaps in front of the front wheels and the longer center section is slightly cambered. The nose is similar thick like generation 2 and there is a 250 kW electric motor sitting at the front now too. But this one will only be used for recuperation, not acceleration that allows the car to accelerate with only 350 kilowatt, but to decelerate with 600 kilowatt to charge the battery. This then enables them to get rid of the rear hydraulic brakes and recuperation produces 40% of the energy used during a race, instead of 25% in generation 2. This also means more work for the battery, because it needs to provide higher output than before and, at the same time, deal with higher charging rate. In contrast to a combustion engine, both of these processes produce heat, so battery cooling is key here. And now there is one electric motor in front and one at the back to cool. In that respect, it's interesting to see that they got rid of the side pod inlets and moved the intakes to the top center of the car. Previously the roll hoop was empty, now it looks like it's an air intake. This concept gives them aerodynamics like a real boat. The triangular shape of the car isn't just design, it's also defining its aerodynamics. At the back we can see something that looks like an outlet chimney and a relatively high rear to make space for a large outlet. The fact that there is no flow along the inner sides of the rear wheels is bringing less energy to the top of the diffuser and hence limits its performance. A good thing about being smaller and having less bodywork than previous generations is that during contacts there are less parts flying around and the car should get a little bit more reliable even after contacts. Charging should be a lot more powerful and faster because the battery can already take up to 600 kW of input while driving. Also pit stops could be introduced with the new generation. So the new Formula E generation is getting a lot more powerful, smaller and with 840 kg significantly lighter and also pretty close to the heavy Formula 1 cars. An interesting development trend that could be good for other categories as well. See you at the next video.